Sometimes <laughs> you got to wake up, get some sunlight in your eyes. Ooh. Let that acclimate for a bit. All right. Let's get this day started. Obviously, I look crazy right now, but, you know, I'm about to go get some gym get some sunlight. I feel like that's fundamental. If you really want to have a good day, you got to set the pace right. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I made my pre-workout yesterday and I didn't get to use it because it was too late. I didn't want to have pre-workout at night if I work out. So today I'm going to have this already. It's in one of those like insulated bottles, which should still be pretty cold. Yeah. I didn't really get to work out yesterday. I got hacked on uh, Facebook. So Put me in the dumps, but you know what I mean? If you want to get better, you got to do shit when you're uncomfortable. So today we're going to go hit the gym. I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to probably eat some of that Costco salmon uh, hack where you can make your own sashimi at home. Um, my fridge is a mess, as you can tell. I'm your uh, average everyday Joe. So that's my that's my that's my fridge. So we got some ground turkey in there already. Got some eggs, of course. Um, and these Greek yogurts are bomb. I love these Greek yogurts. So I usually add some protein powder to that, blend it up, and you get a nice little pudding that's basically almost pure protein. Obviously, I got some papayas. I like them. High fiber, plus they're anti-parasitic. So, yeah. All right. Let me get changed. We off to the gym. All right. So I don't want to comb my hair, so I'm just gonna attach my my put my hat on. All right. It's easier like that. Now we head to the gym. I have the most janky setup for my camera right now. It's ridiculous, but hopefully I get a better better setup tomorrow. I'm getting a new camera. I'm getting the creator bundle of the same camera. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, I got my little brother here ready to grab it just in case it falls. So but we'll see. Why do like daily vlogs to kind of show you guys a day to day life, maybe set an example, show you that you can have a bad day and still have a good workout, right? Because I decided to have a bad day yesterday with the whole Facebook being hacked and all that drama. But today I'm going to go get a good workout in and hopefully I'll feel better. Uh, I got my pre-workout in here today. I usually don't take pre-workout because I don't need it. But because, like I said, bad day, hopefully this will give me a little boost, uh, the boost I need to get this workout in. And of course, today we're going to be doing uh, deadlifts. So pull day. Um, I'm going to be walking my little brother through it. He's visiting from New York. He's going to be here. Um, he just passed his bar exam. I will not give his name or identity for legal reasons. <laughs> yeah, it fell. See, he perfectly fell. But he has good reflexes, almost cat-like reflexes. But yeah, just, just driving, going through. It's a bumpy ride. Um, gonna get the car handled today. <laughs> this dude is like struggling to keep it alive, which is the funny part. But uh, yeah, I wanted to get a rig where I can kind of record myself without another person because I like to do a lot of solo activities. Uh, hashtag introvert, hashtag lone wolf. But uh, I also wanted to make more content because I feel like a lot of people need content. And now today I'm going to go get that deadlift in and hopefully, like I said, I'll feel better because I'm really mad at these uh, scammers that they spend the entirety of their life just <laughs> trying to scam people. And I'm somebody that's like super cautious about their 
their internet presence, like legitimately, I never click any spam links. I never like review any documents or download PDFs or anything uh, to the point where when I did get a message from uh, Facebook that my Facebook account information was changed, the business manager was added to it, I didn't believe it. So I literally reached out to the meta agent and I asked, yo, like, like what's going on? And I double checked if I could log in. I couldn't log in. So I knew that was like, they definitely got me and that was authentic. But I didn't reply to an email or anything like that. Directly went to the app. And they basically said, like, oh, did you get fished? Phishing is basically when people make it look like the email comes from an authentic source. But in reality, it's like, you know, uh, somebody hacking you or you click a link. I was like, no, I don't click links. I didn't even believe in the email that I got from Facebook verified saying that I was, you know, I changed my information. So I was like, no, I didn't click a link. I gathered some information to show that I got hacked and then I submitted it uh, yesterday. So hopefully they try to reach out back to me and I can try to get my account back. And let me tell you, this was a sophisticated hack, right? Because um, you can't have the gimbal head touch the back. Yeah, it messes it up. Um, it was a sophisticated hack because of the fact that they did not access my account through regular methods, right? So, like, you know, you can take the call if you want. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's like they, they I, did, I have two-factor authentication on with an authenticator app and my phone, so there was no login attempt uh, at all. So what they did was they somehow was able to go into my, my Meta business account. And for people that don't know, the Meta, uh, Meta Center handles not only Facebook, but also into Instagram, they integrated into it. And they somehow added themselves as a business manager onto the Meta app. And then through there, they removed me, changed my password, and then they linked an Instagram that they created to that face my you know my Facebook account and that Instagram they linked to it they did a community guidelines violation that's severe so for example if you if you post like you know naked photos of people or like violence or misinformation you get an automatic ban and any account linked to that account automatically gets banned as well so they linked it to that Facebook and it banned uh, to that Instagram and it banned my Facebook on top of that. And they did this because if I was able to recover my Facebook, I'd be able to grab my uh, meta, uh, meta business suit back. So it was a very like never heard of scam that they pulled. And I don't, I don't think Facebook is addressing this issue and, um, or made it public yet because I understand the under like, you know, the logic behind it is like, if more people know about this then more people will potentially do this to other people, but at the same time, if I knew about this, like I would have been more adamant and checking my business managers all the time, even though I didn't add anybody. Um, and my one of my brother's uh, pages was actually he he saw that somebody added themselves as a business manager and he quickly got it off. But he also saw the history because I'm a, I'm a manager on that account as well, that that person removed me as a manager. So we were able to like find the profile and then I linked all the evidence to to meta so hopefully you know i can get something done but because of that yesterday i woke up to that by the way and because it hacked me overnight and then i had a friend stay over and their car got towed from my uh because i live in a gated community and you're not allowed to park there without a permit or whatever but that person my friend actually got uh, a rental car which had temporary tags on it a uh, license plate so they actually towed um her like you know their car I literally, we had to go and try to get it back. And it was, it took like three hours to get their car back. It was ridiculous. And that was on top of me being hacked. And then I went home, we tried to figure things out. I secured my other accounts. I changed all my passwords to crazy. If you're trying to hack me, good luck, buddy. You better have a, <laughs> your stepbrother better be chat GPT. But um, yeah, hopefully, you know, that works out. Now, so what, I, what am I going to do, right? So there's you know two paths I could take. I could wallow in self pity, right? So I did give myself a little period of remorse, uh, griefing period, if you will, yesterday grieving period, um, and I just you know stayed home. I didn't want my bad luck to pile on, and then today, what well, I could have just did the same thing: stayed home, ate some food, ordered in. It's also cloudy and rainy outside, but instead of making excuses, 
um, for the for what happened yesterday and blaming the universe and not taking any accountability on myself. I was like, hey, listen, I'm gonna get my ass out of bed, go to the gym, get a real hard workout in, and this will set the pace for the rest of the week, right? For the weekend. And um, making some content always makes me feel great because I feel like I actually accomplished something uh, when I edit and post a video. So I was like, all right, I want to shoot more of these long form videos, right? A big inspiration for me is Sam Sulek, who's been like blowing up with this like longer videos, which is which is wild to me because like everybody has the attention span of a of a goldfish with ADHD. Like it's literally like two second attention span right now. And I blame Vine, right? Great app. I loved it. RIP Vine. But it got to a point where nobody has an attention span anymore. And it's um, it's really hard to make content that's long form to the point that he's doing. He's doing like 30 minute, 40 minute videos every day, minimal editing. Uh, but that's something I always like to do. And I never really had the courage to do it because I felt like I would not be rewarded for it. But now I'm just going to do it just as a great way to kind of share a personal story, maybe motivate one or two people. Right. If I motivate one person to go outside and get a workout in and feel better about themselves. Mission accomplished. Right. Why do I need the algorithm to tell me? that did a good job and give me like a million views, right? If I could change somebody's life, shit, let's do it. But hey, man, if I get a million views and some revenue from YouTube, <laughs> let's do that as well, right? I'm not saying if YouTube is listening, I love you. I get on both knees for you every night. But um, yeah, so hopefully let's get this workout in. About to pull up to the gym. I don't want to walk in with a camera because I don't have <laughs> the self-confidence or the nerves to do that yet. And later on, maybe, you know, I'll grab the camera, walk in with it. But, you know, it's my first time doing this. So for today, I'll park the car, go inside, set up the camera, do some a little bit of video work. Um, video work. I was a tongue twister, by the way. But, um, yeah, see you guys inside. Cheers. Okay, get you. You just hold this. You just do this like this. What's that one? All right, so we got to see if this will actually record with it. We'll give it a try. It's a gimbal, it's super loud in here too. So, you know, it's gonna depend on volume of things. But usually when I set up, I like to set it up up there so that I can load the first two places which are the hardest. And this is my warm up. I always do RDL to warm up for some reason for the first one to really stretch those hamstrings out. Because I feel like I have really tight, naturally tight hamstrings. Oh. I usually do beltless and strapless for a warm-up. And then heavier I go, the more safety precautions I take. Because, you know, I'm coming back from an injury. I like one more. I don't really keep count. I just kind of do it until I feel my hamstrings loosen up a little bit. Oh, let's use the burp. Oh. That's not bad at all. This is a roly poly one, too. It just keeps rolling. And the music is always blasting in here. But, you know, like I said, that didn't feel too terrible uh, per se. So we'll give it a try. <laughs> yeah, not too terrible. But even for two plates, since I'm just coming back, I'm probably going to be doing uh, with the belt. So safety first. <sighs> So a pretty good job of like tracking me too. So that's always good. It's a belt I use. I got off of Amazon for like 10 bucks. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, put this bad boy on. You know, I got fat when I could only put it on the third loop. Are you able to put it on like the fourth? Jason, can I get another plate? So 
It's a trick to putting on. Yeah, 45, please. It's a trick to putting it on. I'll show you right now. I'm trying to keep my face in frame so that it doesn't like lock out my video. So the trick is when you put in this plate on, right? You want to make sure that it is not straight like this. You want to put a slight backward tilt on it, right? And then you can slip it on, right? Slip it right in, prom night. All right, so for two plates, I'll continue to not use a grip, but I will use a belt. Because like I said, coming back from an injury, you just want to be as safe as possible. Get a good thing in, quick prayer for the belt, for the iron, to respect it, grab it, deep breath in. I will make sure I actively rip the bar. Once again, I don't really count reps. I just do it until I feel warm. Because, you know, once again, that's what it is, the warm-up. Oh. I take it off after because I can't breathe. I have that shit tight. Oh. oh, yeah. I already feel the frustration leaving my body. That's always a good sign because <laughs> I feel the pain entering. When the pain enters, the frustration leaves. Go ahead. You want to do yours? All right. I'm going to go see my brother do it. He's going to be doing deadlifts today with dumbbells. So, okay. Grab it. Yeah. No, no, no. Normal. Yeah, normal grip. Yeah. Now, bring it closer to your body. All right. Keep your arms always locked and straight. Locked and straight. Exactly like that. Chest up. Bring your feet closer together. Yeah, perfect. Now, when you go down, you're not bending down immediately. You're pushing your butt back and then bending down. Okay, so push your butt back, bend down. Perfect, I'll go down and I'll... Hey man, that was really good for a sport. Again. And up fast. So it's harder with a dumbbell versus learning with a barbell because since it's not like tall, you have to go all the way to the floor, right? Versus something like this, it's off the floor, about a foot off the floor. So you don't have to bend down as well. So dumbbells are actually harder, but it's great to learn because it's not heavy either. Again, chest up, all the way up. Okay, good. You can put that back. So you'll actually, what you'll do is you'll do it with the bar and that 10 pound plate because you'll get the height too. You'll see that'll be significantly easier. Okay. Yeah, he's a good, he's a natural. Well, you got to expect it because he's my brother, right? So. Even though it's the first day back, I think I will do three plates. Um, because why not? Right? I feel like three plates is a, is a good segue into uh, getting back on track. Right? That's the main thing. All right, let's put this bad boy in. Once again, not straight. Slight tilt back, and you're able to push it in. No problem. You're blasting the music in this bitch. All right. So, yeah. Leave that there. Rest for a little bit. If I, if I was you, I'd put that on that. Yeah, I put it on top of that, yeah. That way it's easier for you to load the plates onto. <laughs> All right. Now we take... I put the belt on first when I put the my straps on. I use hook straps just because it's easier. I don't have to do the whole wrapping around bullshit. Every time I want to lift the weight. I just kind of put it on my wrist. 
belt on. And then I put the strappies on. I have to roll up my wrists. Cause if you try to put that strap on above like your wrist sleeve, it will slip <laughs> and you'll drop the weight. But uh, I love doing deadlifts because, no, don't do it yet, yeah. Don't do it yet, rest up, yeah. I like doing uh, deadlifts because it kind of like really uses like every muscle in your body. It's, it's really amazing. It is one of those high risk, high reward exercises, but I feel like if you're injured, and you want your back to get better faster, you do low weight deadlifts and slowly build up the strength in your back. All right, see, straps are on. Captain Hook over here. Do you mind putting on another plate for me, Gator? Do you mind putting on another plate? Yes, Having my brother assist me today. It's good. So when I, when I deadlift, I actually like to deadlift bare feet, um, especially when I go heavier. I feel like I have more balance. I like to take my socks off too, but I'm not giving out free feet content. So, you want me to do it? So here, here, I'll lift this up. Yeah. Go ahead, put it on. Oh. <laughs> All right, good. See how he, str uh, he struggled to put that on? It's because he didn't use that simple technique that I use. Make sure my face is retract. We good? All right. So now we go to a little bit heavier. Um, first day back, so it, it, it might be difficult. I'm not gonna lie, but right. Get down. Respect the iron. So put it in. <clears throat> Close to the body. Chest up. Pull to activate the nerves. Take a deep breath. I still eight rep count, not bad for the first day back, but definitely significantly weaker uh, than a couple weeks ago, to be honest. But uh, wasn't too bad, not too shabby. Oh, all right, Keisha, ready? Huh? Let's try to go for six reps. Okay. Okay. Now it's my brother's turn. Yeah, just yourself. Okay. Chest up. Bring the bar closer to you. Yeah. Chest up. Lean back slightly. Okay. Yeah, go. Up. Hump the bar. Hump the bar at the top. Squeeze your butt together. Perfect. Down the same way you came up. Beautiful. Up again. Nice. Arms completely straight. Here, go down. Up fast. Three, down. Yeah, control, you always wanna control your down because you wanna fight gravity. The more you fight gravity, stronger you get. Nice, down. One more, chest up. Very nice, down, that's good. You could probably do more, but don't. You could probably do more. Yeah, he's pretty good, he's very good for Somebody who's just starting. Uh, I am going to try to attempt a four four plate pull today. I should not, but uh, I will. I will. Yeah. yeah. This side's harder to put because it's off the thing. So for four plates, I like to usually. Uh, I like to use, make sure that it is locked in place with a pin only because when it's not, and it even shifts a little bit, it risks chance of injury. So even, so I don't want that to happen. 
it did stop tracking me, but I will have a track again in a second. Just a little warning. I might slam this weight. It's not to be discourteous, but it is genuinely very heavy. So if you see me, you never usually see me slam a weight, but in a situation I might. Give me a second. So, sorry about that. It's actually my apartment complex, and they were telling me that somebody dropped the package off. Let's track my face again, hopefully. Will we be able to? There we go. All right, so this is a, a riskier, riskier pull for me. Um, I'm only going to attempt it. So if I feel any uncomfortableness, uncomfortability while I do the lift, I'll immediately let it go. Okay. So one thing you want to do is if you feel uncomfortable, you got to drop, it, you got to bail. So if I feel like I can't do it, I'm just going to bail. All right. <laughs> and attempt this. This was my rep out weight before, but like I said, injuries happen. Life happens, and you just got to kind of come back stronger than ever. You feel me? All right. Get a nice little, <laughs> oh, move my hips a little bit, you know? Feel me? Move it out a little bit. <sighs> so this is uh, 405 pounds. Um, We'll see how this one goes. But uh, yeah, just getting my focus, getting dialed in. What I like to do is I like to imagine the color red, right? So there was like that CIA uh, project that was disclosed and they were testing new things. One of them was uh, envisioning the color red before doing a strength exercise to increase power. So I like to envision fire running through my body and I like to pull upon seeing the ignition in my brain. So that's what I'm gonna be attempting right now. Let's see if I can pull it off. First, of course, respect the iron. Respect the iron, lock it in place. Okay, I did it. I'm able to do it. Not a weak pussy as I thought. It was a lot rougher. It was a pull. It was a tough pull, but I think I uh, accomplished that decently. I think it was a smooth pull. I think I could have put it down a little bit smoother, uh, but you know, it's all about small incremental steps, right? I haven't been lifting like it for a while. Hopefully, once I get back into the swing of things. Um, I can recover, right? But even though it was only one pull, I do feel accomplished. I feel like I did something today. And I also feel not as bad as yesterday, right? I felt like shit yesterday. So now my younger brother's also doing it. Test up. Nice. Great job. Up fast. And you go down slow. Like control it. Not too slow, but you, you want to fight gravity. Up fast as you can. Nice. Now down, not too slow, but fight gravity. Up fast. And clench your butt together. Yeah, and go down. The lockout, when you lock out, clench your butt together. Yes. Imagine there's a cookie in there, you're trying to crunch it. <laughs> Got it, come on. One more. Last one, chest out. Take your chest out. Yeah. Nice, down. Very good, very good. Hey man, we haven't deadlifted before, but he's doing a phenomenal job for somebody who literally just started. So I'm very proud of him. All right, so I'm gonna show you my way of deloading a bar. It's, it's very quick and it's efficient, okay? 
So the first thing is you never want to grab the plates from the top and pull. See how it locks into place? The plates will lock into place, right? Instead, you want to grab it from the bottom and then pull out. See, it comes right out. Grab the next one. Pull out. And the next one. And then pull out. And then the next one. And then pull out. Now, here's where it gets even easier, right? Maybe I should have locked myself first. Actually, I don't need to. Okay, so then we go over here. We go to this next one. You get the pins off, like take the pin off finally, and then you stand it up straight like a stripper pole. Somebody come get me, I'm dancing like a stripper. You grab it like you're pulling out the sword and boom, that's it. You deloaded all your plates. Simple as that. All right, so we're gonna head over to the next exercise. I'm gonna see you in a bit. I'm fucking tired though. All right, so we waited till somebody was done with the machine because we wanted the one closer to, you know, the windows so better lighting and all that. Um, and obviously you don't want to rush people at the gym because how you doing? No, you can definitely cross. You don't have to worry about me. So polite here. But uh, yeah, definitely people at the gym have the right of way, right? They're here for a workout. I'm here to make videos. They get prioritized. So yeah, I told the guy, face your set, take as much time as you want. He said, should I move? I said, no, he's a very nice dude too. But uh, yeah, let's get it in. I'm gonna start off a little bit light for the lat pull down. I like to really stretch my lats when I do it. I'm not Sam Sulik, so you will not see me racking the whole plate. That man's a monster. But uh, yeah, gonna make sure that I don't break my mic though. I like to get a real, real good stretch on it. I like they really contract the lats when I do it, but yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I noticed that I'm coming up. I'm worried about my back. Uh, like, for example, my back going over. Mm -hmm, yeah. How do I make sure my back? Okay. 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 My brother had a great question, right? So he said that. When he deadlifts, he's worried about his back, right? He's worried that his back is never going to be in the proper position, and he doesn't know how to gauge what a proper position is when he's deadlifting, right? It's a great question, by the way. So one thing you could do for that, I tell everybody, is you stick your chest out, right? I call it pigeon chest. Like, you know how those pigeons in New York where you go? Yeah. You pigeon chest yourself out, and this forces you to have proper position by keeping your spine neutral, okay? So when you're deadlifting for the entirety of the duration of the deadlift, what you want to do is, so you start at the bottom, right? You're starting here, start here, right? Now, if your chest is not pigeoned out, you'd be like this. You see how my back automatically curves? I look like a dog taking a shit. You never want to look like a dog taking a shit when you deadlift, right? How do you fix that? You stick your chest out, right? You see how I'm sticking my chest out? Chest down, chest out actively. When you stick your chest out, you want to contract your lats. The back muscles over there, right, the lat muscles, tighten them to keep that chest in the position, right? You take a deep breath into your stomach. You make your stomach as big as possible. You keep it there, and then you burst upwards, right? So what, what happens is you get two steps. One, you get your chest stuck out to force you to keep your spine straight, right? And the second thing is when you take that deep breath, it creates this pocket of air, right, down there by your lungs, which also forces your spine into a neutral position, right? So that big breath also keeps your lower spine from shifting and your mid spine from shifting, which is what causes injuries when you're deadlifting, right? Don't get me wrong. A little bit of back bending is completely fine. We are developed, we're created in a way where our backs can do those motions, right? Now the issue lies in when you go too heavy, right? So say you're deadlifting 315 pounds, so your spine get that same amount of pressure, uh, of when you don't have 315 pounds, right? No, right? So they're not strong enough. That's why initially you don't need a belt, right? Initially you shouldn't use a belt. So when you're doing one plate, even up to two plates, you wouldn't really need a belt per se because you want to also strengthen it, get the proper form, not rely on a belt and learn the form really well, okay? But when you go heavier, when you go to like above two plates, you go to three plates, which is 315, you go to four plates, which is, you know, 405, you should wear a belt, right? Because Say your weight, what's your weight? You're 190 pounds. 
So your body is not meant to, those little muscles, those motor muscles are not meant for 400 pounds, right? They're meant for 190 pounds. So when you're lifting something so heavy, then you need a belt to keep those weaker muscles protected, right? And that belt is great. Cause you remember what I talked about earlier? When you take that deep breath into your stomach and brace yourself, you create that little air pocket for protection. That belt doubles up on the air pocket. So now that, that when you take that deep breath, the air pocket's not only pressing against your back, it's pressing against the belt. It's creating a more compressing force to protect your spine, right? So that's basically it. You wanna make sure you stick your chest out as much as possible and tighten the lats. And two, you wanna take a deep breath and brace your stomach before you shoot upwards like a rocket. So it's like basically go, exhale at the top, right? You take it, and then when you're going back down, you inhale, deep breath, and now you tighten, exhale at the top, okay? Okay, okay, good question. He said, for the people that get to the point where they will need a belt to lift, how do they pick out a good belt, right? I personally believe those leather or fox leather belts are the best because they're really sturdy, and they're also malleable, okay? Those plastic-based ones and those fabric-based ones are both not good because the plastic-based ones are too rigid, okay? And they can injure you, cause you internal injuries, and the fabric-based ones are not strong enough. They contour too much, right? So they both are not great. A good middle ground is the leather one. Anyway, go to my working weight. Start at like uh, around 209 and do a little bit there and then slowly work my way up. So, nice stretch, down. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I felt myself cheating. I felt myself using uh, momentum to pull it down. So, you know, there's two types of failure. There's, um, you know, true failure, and then there's mechanical failure, right? So in this situation, when I feel like the muscles that I'm targeting specifically, which is my shoulders and my lats, um, when they are fully pooped out, I'm using other compensation mechanisms to pull the weight down. And I think at that point, you don't need to keep going, but I know people like Sam Salute like to go push that up above and beyond and it works for him, it works for him. Uh, but yeah, that's what I like to do. I like to stop there because I do not want to get injured and I'm not on um, any performance enhancing stuff. So it'll be much harder for me to recover. Ooh. Can you do a last hold down? Uh, where in the bar? Are you Great question. So my brother asked, when you do a lap pull down, where on the bar do you put your hands? So, I like to put it a little bit around shoulder width, right? Because I feel like this activates my lats more. And then if you bring it closer, it activates your upper back more. But personally, I do lat pull downs to focus on my lats. So I do put my arm about a little bit wider than shoulder width. So this is shoulder, a little bit wider right about two inches uh, past shoulder width is where I like to pull because I also feel that there's less strain on your shoulder joints when you have that distance. Another thing is when you go, when you bring the bar down, you don't want to have, you don't want to pull it down like this, right? Where like you're pulling your elbows down really far away from your body. Instead, you want to keep it at an angle and kind of bring the elbows down towards your ribs. That way you get to use the lat muscles more and you use less of your shoulder joint. But uh, yeah. Okay, it's your turn. Now, my brother's gonna do it too. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. Um, okay, you wanna start at 77? That's good. All right, yeah, chest up, yeah. Bring it up slowly to contract this. You can bring it down fast, but bring it up, fight gravity, right? Yeah, fight the machine, yeah. There we go. Up, control, down as fast as you can. So the co-centric, I always like to do it as explosive as possible. And then on the eccentric portion, do it as slow as possible. Really stretch out those muscle fibers. 
Yeah, you did a great job. Up control, yep. You want to stick your chest out the entire time too, right? You see how his chest is stuck out? It's good. He's a good natural. Two more. Nice. One more. Okay. Very good job. Yeah. Oh. Pretty good. Did a pretty good job. Um, I don't really want to inconvenience anybody at the gym, so <laughs> like uh if somebody's uncomfortable and they ask me to move, I will move. All right. Go for our next set. Uh, I'm probably gonna do a little bit heavier, but less reps. So we're, I'm trying to just reach failure um, and then stop at failure. So stop at mechanical failure and not go further than that. So here we go. Here we go. Ah. <sighs> yeah, I'm about to fail. <laughs> I could cheat a little bit. And that's it. I don't like to cheat too much. I know it did untrack me, so let me retract myself. There we go. Good job of retracting too. Oh. 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 Oh, uh, when I'm working out, sometimes I feel like when I do, when you do a set of 12, like at eight, I get really tired. Mm -hmm. the next four, I feel like I might not do it the best. Should I stop and do the other four afterwards? Or should I kind of like, it's okay if the next four is not as great as the first one's Okay, it's a good question. So he's saying that if he's aiming for a set of 12, and then he gets to around eight reps and his form is really good. And then the last four reps, his form is garbage. Should he just stop at eight or should he continue and complete the full 12, right? I think personally, if you, you go by rep ranges, right? You choose a weight, you're able to do eight reps to 10 reps of that without any issue. And it's like too easy. And you feel like you could do four more reps and it's not that great, but you could do four more. I think you should increase the weight, right? Not by a lot, like 2.5 pounds or five pounds, increase the weight and continue doing it. I think people are too focused on rep ranges and not focused enough on reaching failure, right? You don't need to reach failure on every set, but it's better to reach failure doing only two sets of an exercise versus doing like six sets of exercise and not reaching failure on any of them, right? So just get to the point where you reach failure. That's when you can't keep your form too good. You can't get another rep out without like swinging your body, right? So that would be failure, right? So you reach that point and that's it. You stop there. If you do two sets that you're reaching failure, you're going to see muscle growth no matter what, right? Versus if you're doing 10 sets and you're never reaching failure on any of them, you'll see very slow muscle growth, right? Oh. All right. I'll do one more set. Hopefully, I'll get this through. Only got 19% battery left, so. <laughs> Get this done, do a little bit of arms, call it a day. For today, hit some cardio at night, you know? All right, last set. Last set, a little bit heavier. Please don't hit my head. All right. Last set, slightly heavier. Maybe like two more on things. See, gonna pull maybe not like 50 reps, like maybe one or two just to see if I can reach failure with it. Well, yeah, that was, I'm done. I'm toast. Definitely toast. But yeah, we'll see you at, uh, my battery's about to die. Next time I'll actually charge my phone better <laughs> before I do this. So I'll see you down there for arms. All right, so I like to warm up first. I like to warm up with 21s. Ah. 
All right, the warm up at 21. And uh, the reason I choose that is that I believe that 21s bring more blood straight to your biceps or the muscle group <laughs> that you're working on. So I do 21s with a lighter weight. Like, as you can tell, I just do 25. And then I switch up to a slightly higher weight. And I do this on my pull day. I feel like I don't have to go too hard after pulling on my biceps because the deadlift strength is that well enough by itself. Mm. Mm. Oh. One thing it does is it'll automatically so sometimes it will stop tracking me because I look down, um, which is not optimal. But like I said, it's a one-man camera army, right? All right. Go ahead. Grab maybe a uh, 15. Yeah. Yeah, Grab 15 for yourself. In the air. My hair is a mess, which is why I don't take my <laughs> uh, take my hat off at the gym. But I also don't want to comb my hair. But like I said, it's hot now. I'm sweating like a pig. So I will keep that on. But yeah, there's not great lighting to show you the veins and stuff, but I'll try. Let's see if I can actually make this go down a little bit lower. That's good enough. All right. Go ahead. Uh, bites of curl. Let me see your form. Elbows a little bit more in front of your body? Like, yeah, yeah, right there. You feel the difference? All the way down. And then, not all the way up though. Okay. So all the way down, and right there, yeah. Yeah, so in 21s I go all the way up because it's just 21s, but let's, let's try to do a little bit of. <sighs> do a 12. All right. You can see a little bit better. It's like dark in here. I like to fry myself with that and then I like to get a little, maybe a little bit better lighting over here where my brother was. See what this feels. That's pretty bad lighting throughout. There's really nothing I can do. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm about close to fried. <laughs> it's fully fried. Fully fried. All right. Unfortunately, my battery is about to die. So next time I have a longer vlog when I remember to charge my battery. I'm actually getting the extended battery pack too, so it'll be better overall. So love y'all. See you in the next one.